Are you looking for some new family weight board games that just do things a little bit differently than all of the other board games out there? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm going to share with you two of my favorite newly acquired family weight games that will liven up, add a little bit of color to your board game collection, as well as increase the happiness that you have on your board game night. Hi, my name's Danny. I'm an avid modern board gamer from Australia who loves sharing my passion for this hobby with you, my friends, and my family. Come and join me for this journey. Hey Danny, what did you think of the game? Well, I thought it was pretty cool, creative, and quite fun. A little bit quirky as well. I really enjoyed how you shared your perspective on perspectives. Perspectives is a game all about looking from different points of view. Each player will have a slice of the puzzle cake and everything is connected together like some episode of Dirk Gently. The intriguing part of this game is that you can't show anyone your images and you can only relay the info that you have through verbal communication. So there is no backseat driving. It's like a dot to dot puzzle where you're only given a quarter of the dots but need to rely on the intuitiveness of your peers to build the full complete picture. The scurry of overlapping conversations is what makes this game a charm. My first take on perspectives is the fact that I love the way that this game is structured. You basically pull the cards out, you deal the cards in the numerical order that they're already set in and you're ready to play the game. And the rest is up to you. You literally converse, describe, explain, share theories. And I think what I really enjoyed about Perspectives was not only the three acts that you kind of have to play through and then kind of piecing together all of the 36 cards at the end in that fourth act to solve like a global puzzle. It just really flows so well. And plus the little story points along the way really lead you into the next act. I like how it kind of follows that kind of episodic formula where it's like, ooh, there's a crime. Ooh, someone's stolen the Nagaraja. Now, where do we start this investigation? You're picking up the pieces, you've got an email or even a picture of like the Nagaraja and some dimensions. And you're just literally trying to figure out what's happened. I love that open-endedness. And when I've played this game, it's almost felt like, wow, we've just entered an escape room and now we just have to figure out what on earth went on. And as you talk and share your information, smaller details in the cards actually get magnified and then they create these cool aha moments where you're like, oh my goodness, I've just realized my card connects to your card. And because they connect together, this is the information that comes to light. And I think that's a really good way to sum up perspectives. Having information kind of float to the surface after like 15 or 20 minutes of discussion and then that realization is like, oh my goodness, this is what's happened. This is how it's happened. This is kind of the intricacy of uh, what's going on in this scenario. And I think uh, my best way to describe perspectives is basically it's the game that I wanted time stories to be. It's basically time stories without all of those other funny combat mechanics and Euro mechanics. It literally just takes that card sharing mechanic and turns it into a really engaging experience. If you love crime solving, if you love storytelling, if you just wanna play something that's super easy to just get into, then this game is definitely worth trying. It's a game that I could definitely play multiple times and I've played a couple of the cases with different people and I've really enjoyed it each and every time. And it's a game that isn't destructible, so you can literally pack it up and then gift it to someone else and let them enjoy some of the cool puzzles that are in here. And when I talk about puzzles, I'm not talking about like exit style game puzzles. We're talking about story moments, key events, key things that have occurred in the characters' lives in the world of the case. Now, putting on my gaming hat, on the gaming front, a lot of these sorts of games can often feel like there isn't really much game. Um, some of the games that I've played in the past, like Noobs in Space, are very procedural, where you basically have a quarter of the puzzle and then you've just got to share that piece and kind of work through it together. Perspectives doesn't really feel like that. Yes, you have a piece of the puzzle, a piece of the solution, but the solution 
isn't actually very apparent. You actually need the connection of all the cards together and piecing it together in that way to build the story feels really organic in perspectives. Um, I also like in perspectives to the idea that you all have this equal footing in the game. There isn't really this alpha player effect where one person has better information than the others. Everything really connects together well. There are some cool red herrings in this game. Uh, and when I played Nagaraja, Act 4 really just had my jaw on the floor. I was like, I did not expect that twist. So there are some really cool story twists in the game that I don't want to spoil, but yeah, you just got to play all the way through the whole case to really get the full picture of what's happening. And it's really, really well put together. The only caveat I'll say about perspectives is that it probably isn't really made for young kids. So I guess I would say the age range for this game is probably maybe 10, ages 10 and up. It's not that the themes are, are, are inappropriate, but it's more that the puzzles itself do require an understanding of relationships, ideas, concepts. Uh, I guess one way to get around that is to probably partner people up. I think the two player level is the best way to play this game. So if you've got more than two, it's okay to sit in teams and share some of the information around. But I've just really enjoyed playing this with my hubby. It's just one of those games where after dinner, I could just get out the 12 cards and play the next act. And yeah, um, this was really, really fun. So my score for perspectives is going to be a nine out of 10. What do you think of this game? The puzzle gamer in me really likes how the puzzle is divided into lots of different pieces. The crime solving part of me really enjoys the way the pieces fit together. The Eurogamer part of me really feels like there's not enough resource gathering or engine building in it. The themer in me really loves the tension that's involved. The consumer in me wonders why on earth there's an egg on the front cover. Have you had your double shot of caffeine for today? No worries, because this game will give you all the adrenaline rush that you need. From your customers, that is. Coffee Rush runs like a well-oiled machine, except it's coffee beans. It's about collecting, sorting, organizing your ingredients like some IKEA warehouse packing solution in order to fulfill all your coffee orders. Watch out though, because your neighbors are your competitors and whatever you finish stacks onto their queue. If you relax and have a coffee or two, you might miss the grind or a customer or two. Coffee Rush is one of those games that when I first saw the cover and the theme, I was like, I must add this to my collection. Not only am I addicted to coffee, I literally wake up every morning and go, the first thing I need to get is barista made coffee, but the actual idea of fulfilling orders, managing things, it's, it reminds me of Cafe Rush uh, and a lot of those app games I used to play on my phone whilst you know I used to catch public transport. But this game kind of captures that idea that, oh my goodness, all these orders are coming in and you've got to fulfill the orders as you go in such a quick, vibrant and high pressured way. You've got several layers of puzzle in this game. You've got the puzzle of navigating the ingredients board where some ingredients only appear once. So if a player is on that space, players are gonna to have to expend their two units of movement to go across that space to get the ingredient that's been blocked. So this kind of geographical navigational puzzle of collecting the ingredients, also blocking other people, but making it harder for them to be more efficient at collecting ingredients. But then you've also got the order system where whenever you've got an order, if you don't fulfill it, all the orders shift down. And if any orders fall off the bottom, then they count as negative reviews against your cafe. There's actually two really cool twists in this game. The first one being the idea that if you finish your orders, the next two players in clockwise order get that many orders added to their queue. So the faster and more efficient you are at finishing them, you're putting the pressure on the other people at at the table. So it makes for a really tense and competitive experience. The other thing I like is the fact that you've only got three cups and the idea that you're putting the ingredients into the cups and then once you put the ingredients into the cup, it's committed to that cup. And in order to restart the cup, you need to spend kind of like an action to uh, empty it. As you're collecting these ingredients around this grid and then you're also upgrading your workers' powers, you're trying to do this most efficiently and most quickly as possible. And I think that makes it such a tense racing game, but also the pressure of trying to fulfill things and get the right combos, it just makes for such like a great experience. It kind of makes you feel like you've just had like 10 shots of coffee and you're just literally revving to go. <laughs> now if I put my critical hat on and look at Coffee Rush from a different perspective, 
I must say that Coffee Rush does feel a little bit repetitive. Uh, yes, you have a little bit of variability in terms of what upgrades you might go for, but the fact that you're just collecting the ingredients, putting them in cups, fulfilling orders, it kind of feels like rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat over and over again. And so for me, I feel like the long-term replay value um, is a little bit diminished by that factor alone. The fact that you don't really branch off or explore different strategies. You're, you're just kind of navigating this splendor-esque like puzzle and then fulfilling your orders. So in some ways it does feel a little bit like splendor in that way with even less variability because the recipes that you get uh, are not as differentiated or as unique as all the other recipes in the day. Yes, one might be harder to fulfill. One might give you like a little extra movement token. But other than that, the variability is quite limited. I know there is already an expansion that has been announced, which involves uh, fulfilling cake orders. So I'm really quite curious to see how they take this system and branch it off in ways that makes the game feel fresh and um, feeling less stagnant. And I think one big key thing to games like this is making it feel different each time you play and the challenge of going for one strategy over another um, from game to game is such an important thing. The fact that the, peop the, the boards don't really have asymmetric abilities just also adds to that idea that everyone's just kind of really doing the same thing and getting in the way of each other. Um, overall, I think that's probably an area where this game could be elevated. So I guess my score for Coffee Rush is going to be a 7 out of 10. So what did you think of Perspectives and Coffee Rush? Which of these two games is more your flavour? Are you someone who likes a really good Euro and loves those app kind of fulfilling games where you have to fulfill orders and you know succumb to the pressure of time or do you like the idea of sharing a story and solving a crime together? These are some of the two favorite games I've added this year to my collection and I love them for very very different reasons. So if you're someone who really wants to find out more about family weight board games I've got a huge plethora of videos that are targeted towards family gamers on my main YouTube page please make sure you check them out. Otherwise thank you for joining me for another Board Game Sanctuary video. If you really like my content please head over to my Patreon page and support me there otherwise I'll see you again in the near future. This is Danny signing out. See you again soon. Goodbye!